In this A-level IB biology video, we're going to be talking about energy flow. And really, I've decided to hinge that on the carbon cycle, because I think rather than talking more generally, if I use the carbon cycle to explain this to you, it will make a lot more sense. So fundamentally, all organisms require a supply of energy. And they can get that energy in one of two ways. Number one, plants, algae and some bacteria may absorb light energy and convert it through the process of photosynthesis into organic compounds. Crucially, these sorts of organisms make their own food and are therefore known as producers. So I'm just going to highlight the key points here. How are these organisms obtaining their supply of energy? Well, the producers make the food through the process of photosynthesis and the type of food they're making is organic compounds, which remember are carbon containing ones. The second way in which they do this is through feeding and that encapsulates the consumers, detrivores and saprotrophs. Make sure you're clear that the producers are making their own food, whereas the consumers and detrivores and saprotrophs are obtaining organic compounds from other organisms. Just to give you more detail then, remember consumers feed. Detrivores, again feed, but they feed on dead matter. And remember earthworms are good examples of detrivores. Saprotrophs include fungi and they digest dead matter extracellularly, so outside of their bodies, and e.g. fungi. So to highlight the key points here, the second way of obtaining energy is the consumer detrivore saprotrophic way, which is effectively feeding. Now, even though some of those consumers will be carnivores eating meat, for example, at some point in the food chain, one of those organisms will have had to have been eating plants. And just to show you what I'm talking about, if we take a simple food chain that starts with grass, the rabbit feeds on the grass, and then the rabbit is eaten by a fox. So yeah, the fox is a consumer, it feeds, it feeds upon another animal, the rabbit. However, the start of this food chain started with a producer, the grass. So although the fox doesn't directly eat grass, that is the starting point of all this energy. And remember, the rabbit is therefore the primary consumer, the fox is the secondary consumer. And B, light is the initial energy source for the whole community. And I do think the carbon cycle is a really good way of showing how this all works. So if we start with plants, our producers, carbon dioxide is absorbed by plants. They carry out photosynthesis and they produce organic compounds such as glucose. This is therefore the starting point for making things like starch and cellulose. Now I'm not going to talk about how that carbon dioxide ends up back into the air by respiration because that's not really what I want to get at with this video. What I want to tell you is that those organic compounds are then eaten by consumers. And so that carbon is moving into the consumer and then that consumer produces feces which get broken down by detrivores. The consumers themselves could be eaten by other consumers. And remember, as with everything, they die and therefore their bodies are broken down again by detrivores and potentially saprotrophs. So just to highlight, that carbon dioxide, which is simply present in the air, is absorbed and used in the process of photosynthesis by plants. So that carbon has become a useful organic compound. And then the plants get eaten by a consumer, which could itself be eaten. But meanwhile, while it's alive, it's producing feces, which are used by detrivores. And when they die, detrivores and saprotrophs will again be able to feed and so that starting point of carbon dioxide is how everything else will survive in the food web.